NFL players as their protests grow. President Trump demands that the NFL crack down on anthem protesters. President Trump demands fans to boycott the games as well. He wants the protesters to be fired or suspended according to Fox News. If NFL fans refuse to go to games until players stop disrespecting our flag and country, you will see change take place fast, Trump tweeted. Fire or suspend. Advertisement. Several minutes later, he tweeted, NFL attendance and ratings are way down. Boring games yes, but many stay away because they love our country. League should back U.S. The bashing of the NFL started on Friday night during his rally in Alabama for Luther Strange. He asked the people at the rally if they would enjoy seeing the NFL owners firing these anti-America losers. He kept up with the crackdown when he revoked Steph Curry and the Warriors' invitation to the White House to honor the Warriors' 2017 NBA championship. Quarterback Colin Kernick started the stupid movement last year when he refused to stand for the anthem in some form of protest for his misguided belief of blacks being treated by cops. He still hasn't been signed. That's exactly what he deserves. Advertisement Trump's weekend comments received backlash from numerous liberals like Roger Goodell and LeBron James. They are upset because Trump called them out because he poked their little bubble. The NFL and our players are at our best when we help create a sense of unity in our country and our culture. There is no better example than the amazing response from our clubs and players to the terrible natural disasters we've experienced over the last month, Goodell said. Divisive comments like these demonstrate an unfortunate lack of respect for the NFL, our great game and all of our players and a failure to understand the overwhelming force for good our clubs and players represent in our communities. What do you think of this? Melania Trump wows entire nation of Canada with stunning black and white outfit, pics. America knows how great Melania Trump is and now Canada is getting a chance to find out too as Flota spends the day up north at the opening of the Invictus Games for Disabled Veterans. Arriving at Toronto's Pearson International Airport, Flota then went to the Sheraton Hotel downtown where she met with Prince Harry of Great Britain and enjoyed a great chat ahead of the opening ceremonies. This is Melania's first foreign trip alone and she looks stunning and is reportedly making a spectacular impression. Prince Harry later met with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Melania moved on to meet the U.S. Invictus team. Advertisement Prince Harry, who is 33, is expected to show the public his actress girlfriend Meghan Markle at some point during the Games. During his meeting with Melania the two talked for around half an hour. Flotus turned heads in a black and white dog toothy or suit matched with black high heels. Media reports that Harry looked a bit nervous at first, which is no wonder, wouldn't you be nervous around such a stunningly attractive and intelligent woman? Even a prince can get a case of nerves, after all. Melania is the head of the U.S. delegation at the Invictus Games. She took on the leadership role because she feels very passionately about supporting veterans according to her spokeswoman Stephanie Grisham who said Melania believes that U.S. veterans and their families should be honored every day. This isn't the first time a Trump has met royalty, however, as the newlywed Trumps met Harry's father Prince Charles during a reception at the Museum of Modern Art in NYC in 2005. Grisham said Melania who became an American citizen in 2006, also is very passionate about the Invictus Games, which were founded by veteran Prince Harry in 2014. The Games give injured veterans the chance to compete in Olympic-style events from wheelchair basketball to swimming. Advertisement She has great admiration for the role the Games have played in empowering those who have been injured while serving, Grisham explained. During her meeting with Team USA players, Melania made a brief speech that shows her commitment. Invictus means unconquered and pays tribute to your fighting spirit. You have given so much for your country. You truly are our heroes, Flota said. On behalf of my husband and our entire country, 
I want to thank you and your families for all you have sacrificed to keep us safe. I also want to wish you good luck but I know you won't need it in these games. Take that fighting spirit that I know you have and bring home the gold. God bless you. God bless your families and God bless the United States of America, she added. Isn't Melania making America proud? Canada had better not get too jealous, she's ours. Prince Harry to meet Melania for first time as First Lady takes for first foreign solo trip. First Lady Melania Trump is quickly becoming the most loved Flotus ever. Now she's packing her bags for her first foreign trip alone as Melania will be heading to Toronto, Canada today for the Invictus Games, as reported by CNN. During a day-long visit, Melania will be meeting with popular Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau who President Trump called his newfound friend and with royalty, Prince Harry of Great Britain. All three will be attending the opening ceremonies of the Olympic-style games which are for injured veterans. Advertisement In just two short years, the Invictus Games have allowed thousands of injured and wounded servicemen and women from many different countries to participate in adaptive sports competitions, something that should be lauded and supported worldwide. I am honored by the opportunity to represent our country at this year's Games, Trump wrote in a statement about her trip. Also attending the Invictus Games on behalf of America will be Secretary of Veterans Affairs David Shulkin, Depp. Secretary of State John Sullivan, Gold Star Mom Karen Kelly and Entertainer Wayne Newton. Prince Harry, who is a veteran with a combat tour in Afghanistan, founded the Invictus Games in 2014. Invictus Games includes many intense competitions including in wheelchair rugby, swimming and cycling as well as many more. This year 17 nations will be taking part. As Flotus Melania has made various visits to foreign nations by the side of her husband, including Italy, Saudi Arabia, Poland, Germany, and Israel. This will be her first foreign visit alone, however. In 2014 former Flotus Michelle Obama met with Prince Harry in Orlando to launch the very first Invictus Games. Melania has been very busy lately, standing by the president's side during hurricane relief for victims of Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Harvey, delivering an inspiring speech at the UN, and showing local kids what she's been up to in the White House garden yesterday. Advertisement Melania is sure to get along very well with Prince Harry and Prime Minister Trudeau who are sure to be absolutely charmed by her elegance and brilliance just like America has been. In Melania we trust. Breaking China caves to Trump's demands, puts vice grip on North Korea. New York Post is reporting breaking news about the North Korean crisis. Just days after President Trump gave a stirring speech at the UN warning the rogue regime to stop its aggression, China has agreed to cut down its energy exports to North Korea and stop purchasing the Hermit Kingdom's textiles. China is North Korea's main trading partner and this will be a major blow to its crazed leader Kim Jong-un. In fact 90% of North Korea's trade is with China. China has announced it will limit petroleum exports to 2 million barrels per year starting this January. LNG will no longer be sold to North Korea, which depends on China for basically all of its oil and gas. Nonetheless, China's decision won't affect crude oil, which is the main product shipped to North Korea and a vital one for its military machine and economy to keep rolling. Advertisement Nonetheless, Cutting off petroleum and natural gas is a slap in the face to North Korea, as is China's decision to stop buying clothes and fabric. Textiles are North Korea's main source of foreign money ever since UN sanctions have caused China to stop buying coal, iron ore, seafood and other products. China has been the one to protect North Korea for many years but they have become increasingly frustrated by Kim Jong-un's erratic behavior. Their agreement to these harsh UN sanctions are a big step, because previously China has been cautious about going too far in case North Korea collapses and leaves them with a giant mess right on their doorstep.
In the past China has explained that sanction enforcement mainly hurts them, since they are the main trading partner. The UN Security Council passed a resolution September 11 to cut down fuel exports and stop buying North Korean textiles. China is one of five on the Permanent Security Council and could have vetoed the measure but it agreed to it since the US also agreed not to pursue a full oil ban. Fully banning oil exports into North Korea would basically be a declaration of war, as it would completely shut down almost their entire nation and military within weeks, making the chance they would lash out violently before collapsing very high. According to estimates, North Korea imported 15,000 barrels of crude oil and 6,000 barrels of refined oil to China in 2016. This amounts to about 5.5 million barrels of crude per year and 2.2 million barrels of refined oil per year. Although it has copious amounts of coal, North Korea has almost no sources of oil and gas and relies on foreign countries like China to supply it. Advertisement as for its textile industry, 2016 estimates are that North Korea sold about $750 million of textiles that year, 80% of which sales were to China. China's agreement to these new harsh sanctions is a big move, and might tip the scales in favor of de-escalation. What's your reaction to this news? Do you think it will make Kim Jong-un calm down or is it just going to push him to be even more belligerent? President Donald Trump just showed his support for the NFL boycott. American patriots are eager to boycott the disrespectful players who protest the anthem. And now they got a pleasant surprise from President Trump who showed his support. Trump retweeted one user's message about working together to boycott NFL. You can boycott our anthem we can boycott you. Said the tweet. It seems President Trump wanted to support the people to take down the unpatriotic demonstration of disrespect to our flag and anthem. Courageous patriots have fought and died for our great American flag, we must honor and respect it. Make America great again," Trump said. He also retweeted a message from Donna Warren, an advocate for the NFL boycott, showing respect for veterans. I wonder what this brave American would give to stand on his own two legs just once more for our hash anthem. Warren's tweet reads along with a photo of a veteran without legs. The liberal media has been attacking President Trump since he said any son of a bitch who protests the anthem should be escorted off the field and fired on the spot. But the reality is, what kind of person refuses to stand up when brave American heroes can't stand up for themselves because of the injuries they got fighting for our safety? President Trump was right that is clearly a son of a bitch. As President Trump said it is alright to stand together as one for America and the things you believe, but it is not alright to disrespect your own country, the flag and the anthem in doing so. Please share this post on Facebook with your thoughts. What is your opinion on this? Scroll down to comment below. Newt Gingrich just obliterated anthem protesters with eight simple words. Former Speaker of the House Next Gingrich said over the weekend that millionaires who say they are underprivileged shouldn't disrespect the country. Gingrich said he finds it very offensive. Check it out. He said it was frustrating that millionaires who say they are underprivileged are able to go about disrespecting our country and its veterans. I don't tune into, sports, to worry about politics, he said. I find it very offensive, Gingrich said, adding that he believes kneeling players have sent sports down a slippery slope that will ultimately lead to the anthem no longer being played at games. They're not exactly oppressed. He said of people like Colin Kernick who refuse to stand for presentations of colors at games. Gingrich continued. He said that it is their right to take all their after-tax income and give it to some left-wing nutcase group, but that the anthem is sacred. Don't impose on me your sense of somehow, you feel oppressed, Gingrich said. If you're a multimillionaire who feels oppressed, you need a therapist, and, not a publicity stunt. Here's the clip.
What do you think about this comment below? Saints refuse to stand for the anthem, Louisiana restaurant delivers best response. A Louisiana restaurant refused to show the Saints game on Sunday after 14 players refused to stand during the national anthem. While Café and Wingery in St. Bernard Parish apologized to guests for the inconvenience but did not air the team's game against the Panthers. Check it out. I apologize to all of our guests but we will not be viewing the Saints game today in-house, said the Post. Some of our local players chose to sit during the national anthem, which will not be supported or praised at WOW. Again, we apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. Thank you. The advocate also reported the restaurant's owner said the eatery would continue to boycott the game any time the Saints kneel. Here's the post. The Houston Texans team stood in silence during the anthem. The NFL players continue to disrespect our nation by protesting the national anthem. On Sunday, the field was filled with many players kneeling and demonstrating their hate toward America. And after the president's statement criticizing the protests, even more players decided to protest the anthem. This infuriated many fans of the game who didn't want to see such negativity on the field. But luckily one team refused to participate in the protests. The Houston Texans team stood in silence during the anthem showing their pride and honor of the flag. The Texans have seen a lot of devastation seeing how they are from Texas where Hurricane Harvey hit. Houston was destroyed by the flood and many people are still homeless. Anyhow, the owner had some negative words to say regarding Trump's speech. The NFL specifically and football in general has always unified our communities and families, Texans owner Bob McNair said. The comments made by the president were divisive and counterproductive to what our country needs right now. I hope the reaction from our players results in positive action for our league, our communities and our country as a whole to make a positive difference in our society. Texans players are caring, intelligent men who do so much good. As was shown in the past month when our city was devastated by Hurricane Harvey, McNair added. I have never been more proud of our players and our team than during this time. It was a display of what is truly possible when we all work together. We will continue to support our players to work together to promote the values of respect and unity. Please share this post on Facebook with your thoughts. What is your opinion on this? Scroll down to comment below. A triple amputee Purple Heart recipient destroyed CNN in an epic Facebook post. No politician in U.S. history has gotten as much negative press as Donald Trump. They've attacked him over little comments he made decades ago, they've attacked him over his legal tax write-offs, and they've even blatantly lied about him. One blatant lie, that has been annoying conservatives all across the country, is the lie that Donald Trump has been in cahoots with Russia. There has been absolutely zero evidence to support this claim, in fact there's numerous evidence to the contrary, which CNN continues to ignore. When former FBI head James Comey declared that Donald Trump was not under investigation, did CNN stop spreading their lies? Nope, not even for a second. When Donald Trump Jr. released his emails, did CNN acknowledge them, and apologize for their deceitful tactics? Of course not. For a long time, it seemed that nothing, not even the clear-cut and obvious truth, would put an end to CNN's ridiculous, childish antics. That is, until one of the most respected airmen in all of U.S. history had something to say about it. In a single post that he published roughly a week ago, he completely and utterly destroyed CNN and their anti-Trump, anti-American, globalist agenda. The senior airman, Brian Colfodge, held nothing back, yet despite his no-holds-barred attack on CNN, he's actually an incredibly generous and patriotic person. Freedom Daily praised Brian for his noble sacrifice to protect our country. Brian Colfodge Jr. didn't just fight and sacrifice for our country, 
He lost three limbs in war and now lives with the daily reminder of the price paid for our freedom. This includes defending the right of the First Amendment that each one of us enjoys, which those at CNN use and abuse to disrespect our president and divide our nation. Cole Fudge has good reason to take personal offense to this given his great sacrifice and since they won't stop, he's provided them with a new way of getting to their website, which sends a clear message of what's really real. Brian stated that, CNN is, the enemy of all Americans, because they put their agenda first, instead of the American people. Many Americans, both conservatives and moderate liberals alike, are starting to feel the same way. It seems that CNN has been doubling down on their anti-Trump rhetoric, however, and it's likely only going to make things worse. The post was shared dozens of times, and has since been picked up by numerous conservative news outlets, it's taken Twitter and Facebook by storm over the past 48 hours, and there's a good chance that the folks over at Hash Fake News have seen it more than once. Freedom Daily skewered CNN in their piece on Brian Colfodge, claiming that they've been collaborating with ISIS and Al-Qaeda propaganda creators, something which has recently been confirmed. Since President Trump's inauguration, not a week has gone by without CNN being caught in some sort of scandal, lie, or hoax. And despite their constant protesting, it's only a matter of time before they go bankrupt and alternative conservative news outlets become the new mainstream media. Thank you and God bless our veterans. If you're proud for this man's incredible sacrifice, please give this article a share. Breaking this team just accepted the White House invitation. Red State Watcher brought us an exciting story that shows that not all athletes are hateful towards President Trump. In fact, they are going to show their respect for President Trump even while these liberal losers who are normally in the spotlight don't. They have accepted a trip to the White House. The Pittsburgh Penguins have accepted the invitation to attend a White House ceremony to celebrate their second straight Stanley Cup victory. They are stating that they are going to respect the office of the president. This is at the same time saying they agree with those who feel they need to take a knee in protest. Advertisement You don't see NHL players kneeling during the anthem. Do you know why? Because they aren't taking the ability to be in America and earn millions of dollars for granted. The Pittsburgh Penguins respect the institution of the office of the president, and the long tradition of championship teams visiting the White House, the team said in a statement issued Sunday morning. We attended White House ceremonies after previous championships touring the historic building and visiting briefly with Presidents George H. W. Bush and Barack Obama, and have accepted an invitation to attend again this year. Trump has gone after the NFL. He doesn't have a problem with protesters. He is simply trying to hold the people who are disrespecting our flag, during work hours, accountable. They are free to protest on their own time. They don't have any reason to protest while they're at work. If you protest during a regular job, you're going to get fired, it should be the same for NFL players. Advertisement And addressing the controversy roiling the NFL after Trump on Friday called on team owners to fire players who kneel during the national anthem, the Penguins said they are aware of the need for expression. What do you think of the Penguins being respectful?